Hi, this is Mike Hendrickson from OSCON 2015 in Portland. I'm here with Matthew Hodgson. Matthew, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing very well, thanks. So you're with Matrix.org. Correct. And can you can you talk a little bit about what you guys do? Sure. So Matrix.org is a nonprofit open source initiative uh, which is focused on solving the problem of fragmentation in real time communication today. Um, so the problem we see is that, especially in instant messaging and voice over IP and video calling, there are all of these different apps which effectively do the same thing. And the, the context is that the companies building them seem to focus a lot more on building a community within that app rather than interoperating within any of the apps. And this is a huge step backwards from the internet which was always built to be a collaborative um, environment where everybody would interoperate, and that's the very definition of the thing. But um, for whatever reason, uh, we're getting more and more fragmented until a typical person, I'm sure you have, what, 10, 20 messaging apps on your phone? At least three or four, yeah. Okay, that's still pretty bad in terms of the, all of your conversations being spread between them. I mean, some people are lucky and they have all of their friends on Facebook or all of their conversations in WhatsApp, but in reality, anybody who's more than a casual user now has all of these different conversations fragmented all over the place and it's getting to be a huge problem. And so how are you guys going to solve that? So are you a communication platform? that they all plug into, or how are you going to solve this, this problem? So we're a communication standard um, more than a platform. So what we've done is to provide a very simple, pragmatic HTTP-based um, um, API, which defines that if I want to send to you a message, then I will go and talk to a matrix-compatible service, which will talk to another matrix server, and then you'll be able to get it down to a matrix-compatible application. So that would um, be the classic way of communicating via matrix, um, except, in the actual real world, we obviously have existing silos out there. You've got the Skypes and Facebooks and Hangouts and everybody else. IRC. IRC, in, yeah. indeed, too. And so the, the point of Matrix, and the reason it's called Matrix, is to provide a standard that matrixes these islands together. So, uh, our, in fact, good that you mentioned IRC, because our first bridge that we built for Matrix um, is a IRC to Matrix bridge. So you can access any of Freenode, and huge thanks to the guys at Freenode for allowing us to do this um, via Matrix. Now, the fun thing is that Matrix is completely decentralized, so there is no single chat server where your messages or conversations are being stored. Instead, which all is of... good. Better yeah. security as well, right? Better security, yeah, yeah. Um, especially with end-to-end -end encryption, which we're introducing right now. Um, but we also have um, these bridges which go and connect the existing silos into this decentralized network. So basically no single vendor, no single company ends up owning or having control over those conversations. You as an end user get to pick which service you're going to be using for your instant messaging or voice or indeed Internet of Things data. And, and does it work with VoIP as well? Or yep. it, it does. Okay. So. What kind of companies are starting to work with you on this? I, I'm, I'm curious who are who's going to get behind this and move forward. So we're actually being paid to work on this by my day job, which is with a company called Amdox, which is a big um, telecom solutions provider. So I guess our initial focus has been on the telecoms industry, and there are people like Ericsson who have gone and uh, are experimenting. We're building on top of it currently. Um, employees of companies like MetaSwitch and Truephone and um, Sipgate and other sort of VoIP and and SIP focused people have taken a lot of interest in it. But on the flip side, you also have IoT vendors um, experimenting with it because the fragmentation problem, God, if, if we think it's bad for messaging apps, you look at IoT where every vendor has its own silo or indeed on WebRTC yep. where each web app has its own um, you know, different community within it which can talk to itself. But if you want one WebRTC enabled website to talk to another one, at the moment, it's pretty much uh, a disaster. So this is a standard, You're yep. a, and so you can expand that standard to cover IoT and yep. to cover communications between machines as well down the road? Yep. In the is end, that it's, it's just a decentralized object database. So what I do is to put JSON objects into it, and they and that JSON could be anything. It could be a VoIP setup. It could, we've done MIDI for digital music over Matrix. Yeah. Yeah. We did card telemetry, because all cards have an ODB2 port for standards of telemetry, engine pressure, um, engine temperature, all that sort of thing, putting it into Matrix. So in the end, it's just a big interoperable data fabric for the net. Excellent, so where do you see yourself and Matrix being 12 months from now? If, if you fast forward and we have this discussion next year, mm -hmm. how many new partners and how much new traction are you going to have in that 12 months? Well, for context, at the moment we're just over 12 months in. 
Um, so we got months in. Yeah. Okay. So we got funded back in May of last year, and we uh, launched our very early alpha in September, and then went into beta in December. So we're about six months into beta. Um, we should be coming to 1.0 right about now. It's it's getting there. Close. It's, it's close. Um, and we were hoping for Oscon, perhaps we would flip it over, but instead, no, it's coming together and looking good. Um, right now, we've got about 16 companies who have committed to building solutions on top of it, which is better than our expectations. There's a lot of traction there, um, especially on the telco side, as I said. Um, 12 months from now, well, uh, let me think. Again, for context, we've got about 10,000 users in the ecosystem today, about 150 servers. So it's not as big as the web, it's a little bit smaller. But 12 months from now, it would be great to really see that take off and go more viral. And we're hoping that as uh, we, well, we've just released a new client, uh, a web client SDK that makes it possible to write really, really good um, uh, snappy web clients. The server is the bottleneck unshamedly right now, and we're going to be rewriting that over the next year from a, the initial proof of concept, which is a Python and Twisted beast, into another language and um, have it a lot more scalable. And so hopefully that's going to be the um, trigger for uh, an explosion. It's so explosion, but are you also thinking internationally and worldwide? Mm. So, you know, servers in different so the continents? The servers are already being run by all sorts of different people. I mean, we've got uh, at least 25 different countries in there. Um, and, well, just as the web is more than 150 servers today, I'm hoping there will be orders of magnitude larger than where we are at right now. So out of curiosity, Matrix, the name. Well, it's, I guess it's a cool name. It's, um, I hear there's a film which um, it uh, uh, doesn't really allude to, but it's, um, uh, uh, in the end, it describes what we do. We matrix together silos. You have all of these different islands that can't talk to one another. And it could be IoT, it could be VoIP, it could be instant messaging, and matrix is just a way to allow them to communicate together, to build them into one meta structure, a matrix. Excellent, well Matthew, we certainly hope you succeed and look forward to watching this in the future. Thank you very Thank much, you. good to meet you.